we're ready. Hello and welcome to the Domo Idea Exchange. I'm super excited to have you guys here. My name is Jay Wilson. I am a freelance consultant through my company, Onyx Reporting. And I've been working on this conference for about a quarter now. And before I start talking about the conference, I wanna talk about you guys. So of the people who registered, about 30% of you said your favorite feature was Magic 2.0. 24% uh, of you said Analyzer and Beast Modes were your favorite feature, which has Grant Smith very excited because he's going to be giving a presentation about that later on today. 9% of you talked about how excited you were about the connector framework. And uh, Simon, one of your employees said their favorite thing about Domo was the color of the logo. I won't name them, but they are your only <laughs> TC and EMEA. We need to have a word. <laughs> we definitely do. Through polling you guys and asking what you wanted to learn more about, I think two camps of people emerged, which was great because they were the two target personas for this conference. Some of you are very excited to learn more about Domo Everywhere, to learn more about the platform and features and adrenaline data flows. And then others of you are very excited about understanding how you can align product with platform and strategy, with people and strategy. And so you're asking questions like, how can I drive user adoption? Or how can I leverage alerts and governance? So we're gonna talk about all of those things over the next uh, week. Super excited for all of that. Um, but before we get into that, I would like to both introduce Simon Hayward and thank Simon Hayward for sponsoring this event. And Simon, I guess, um, before we get started, I know the answer now, but I wanted everyone to hear it. Why did you choose to um, align with Onyx Reporting to help putting on this event? What were you seeing and what were you kind of thinking there? Yeah, perfect. Hi, everybody. And hey, Jay, thanks very much for all your hard work putting this event together. We really appreciate it. Yeah, honestly, Jay, this was uh, was one of the easiest decisions, to be quite honest. Um, I took this role on about a year and a half ago, and it became super clear to me quite quickly that we, we, we could do much, much more for the technical community. Um, of which we serve. And, and we've been looking and talking about this for some time. Clearly, and you, you can hear from Carolyn later on, Carolyn had been doing a huge piece of work on the dojo revamp. And it kind of felt to us that it was the right time to get back in touch with this community. And, and in fact, reach out not just in Europe, which I'm obviously responsible for, but, but, but globally as much as we can. And so, yeah, delighted to, 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 to do this one, the first one, and then hopefully this will be a dialogue that we, that we continue into the future, Jay. Okay. Um, to continue on that theme, um, I don't Twitter do the Twitter often, but I did see that Josh James was quoted <laughs> saying that um, it took 10 years to land 10 customers with ARR north of a million and took one extra year to get 10 more. Yeah. That's mind blowing and amazing and congratulations. I know Domo and Mia are a part of that conversation, I guess. What's what's the secret sauce? What do you think changed over the last year or so that um, where we're seeing all of this interest in in and trust, frankly, in the Domo platform? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. That's a great question, Joe. Yeah, I you know it, it's it's huge, right? And I, I was delighted that that Josh shared that because yeah, it's it's been a huge amount of work from from everybody in Domo and our partners and and lots of people kind of around the world. I think. You know, we definitely have seen that the market has come a little bit towards us. You know, Jay, you and I have talked about it a couple of times. You know that we all know, and it's, it's overhyped that the, the kind of the world of data has changed. Specifically, expectations around everybody, even as a consumer, not just as a as a worker, has changed about their access to to data. And so, I think definitely the market has come towards us. People are looking uh, instinctively for a tool that allows them to get access to more data quicker and a scale to make quicker decisions than being able to, to do before. That's definitely one thing. And I think also it's kind of the combination of a huge amount of work over a number of years, Jay. We were very successful in selling globally into, into relatively small use cases into, into departments. I think what the team have done an exceptional job in, in some of the biggest companies in the world, is, is actually used that to then really jettison into a much bigger debate. So not only were providing, for example, a huge amount of value in the marketing department, looking at how they can maximize their return and very quickly make decisions about campaign returns, 
we've been doing that successfully for a, for a number of years. But I think the attention that we've grabbed at the CX, the CXO level has allowed us to go into the heart of IT and BI and have that conversation. And I think that's what we've seen in many, many of these customers, which has taken the opportunity for us and more importantly for our customers to the next level. And that's what you're seeing with some of the big names and the, the big values that Josh is talking about there. Yeah, thank you. Um, Adam, I'm gonna ask you in a couple minutes to talk a little bit more about what your take on this question about what changes you've seen in product over the years that kind of got us to the point where we're at right now. Um, but Simon, I know you're a busy man. I have just one last question for you. Um, of course. We have, I think in the ballpark now of, we got up to 160 people registered for this call or registered for this conference. And that includes yep, um, customers, partners, fellow consultants, um, Domo employees who are trying to understand the value proposition for their customers. If there was one thing that you hope everyone in this community kind of walks away with, um, what would be that one thing? Yeah, it's a great question. There's, clearly there's more than, many more than one thing I'd like. I, th I think really the, the, the word springs to mind for me, Jay, is clarity. Clarity of where they get access to greater technical information. Clarity that they aren't the only person or group of people out there, that mm. there's a bigger global community of people that are able to help and support and guide. And clarity uh, around who they could engage with in Domo, in the partner community. You know, who are those people that you need to speak to? Or you can pick up the phone, drop an email or, or get engaged on the dojo. Who are those people? Who's gonna really gonna help us? And that, if we just do that from this one engagement, I think that would have been a, a great result for, for us, our partners and customers. Wicked, thank you, Simon. Um, Very welcome. Okay, guys. So. As I've already hinted, you know, we've been working on putting this conference together for a quarter now. And um, I kind of wanted to share a little bit of my story um, over the last two years. When I started working at Domo, I think within about three months of onboarding, I was put onto an account that would become one of the largest deals that we closed that year. And it was such a challenge because I would go to the requirements gathering sessions, I would walk out of it, I would look over at Spencer and I'd say, Spencer, Domo can't do that. That's not possible. And he'd say, oh, Jay, it totally is. Just use the Java CLI. I'm like, what's the CLI? And then we would go into another call and walk out of it. And again, Spencer, what you're asking me to do is not possible. And he'd say, of course it is. Just use our API framework to do X, Y, and Z. Where's the documentation for this? So when I left Domo, I started really engaging in the Domo community with you guys and started asking questions and seeing the questions that you guys were posting in Dojo. And I said to myself, we have to provide more information. And so my YouTube channel was born to kind of create one place where you could go to find out how to do X, Y, and Z with the CLI or the API framework. Um, and then ultimately out of that came this desire to put together this conference. So again, to all of my speakers who haven't spoken yet, to all of the people who supported putting this together, thank you so much. Um, Adam, um, I know who you are. I know why this is super cool to have you here, but maybe the rest of the world doesn't know. So who are you and, and what do you do at Domo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, who, who is this guy? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking through the participant, the, the attendees, and I'm actually seeing a lot of names I recognize. So um, some folks um, are, are actually already acquaintances, but I am SVP of product for Domo. Um, the way Domo kind of lays out um, in our product organization is or can I, we kind of have two main trees, if you will. Um, there's sort of the CTO tree and the CTO tree is under Darren Thane and that's where labs and engineering services live. Those are the people that are taking the platform that we've created and they are extending it, you know, and building, uh, you know, uh, applications on top of that for our customers. That's typically where things like the CLI and the API framework are leveraged the most um, to extend the product. And then you have the sort of the CPO organization of Domo, which is headed by Catherine Wong. Um, and that's the organization that I'm in. And, um, you know, that is the core platform. That's core roadmap, sort of like core feature development in the platform. And so that's kind of how we um, bifurcate. So my role um, is to look forward and make sure that I have built a roadmap 
to achieve our strategies um, and, and sort of reach the destination we're intending to reach. And so, you know, for many of you, you've probably been involved with Domo for quite some time. You know, I see some of some faces um, on here that I know has have been using Domo for quite some time since some of the really dark early days even. Um, and uh, you know that we've been on a journey and it's not, you know, we've never been a company that's just been like, okay, well, what six features are most being asked for this week? That's, let's see how we do those. Um, we've been on a journey to, to arrive at a certain place. And certainly you saw the analyst community sort of really change their tone with us this year. Those of you who saw the Gartner uh, Magic Quadrant changes, um, that's a great example of people starting to recognize the destination that, that, that my org is really pushing us toward. I guess, Adam, speaking to that, you know, like I said at the beginning, 30% of people really are loving Magic 2.0, 24% of people said their favorite feature in Domo were Analyzer mm -hmm. and Beast Modes. Can you give a picture of like what the whole product is, how it's kind of changed over the years and where you see us going? Yeah, um, and that's like, that. that's literally like a book to be written, to be honest. Um, <laughs> And so what I'll try and do is, is give the summary. Um, and and uh, you know, some of you know some of this and some of you don't know all of it. Um, and some of you uh, might be surprised by some of the things that I say, but we originally started the whole product with one goal, which was, can we solve this problem where executives say, I can't get information. It takes too long. I can't get the information that I need. When I give it to IT, they come back and they give me a portion of the information, but it's always later than I needed it. And it doesn't matter anymore. I'm on to something else. The business has changed. So we kind of started the whole company with that goal and we worked backwards. So we basically started at that executive and said, well, what experience is going to work for them? Because the biggest challenge we saw was adoption. We saw that people in those executive roles could not pick up a Tableau and do something with it. They couldn't pick up, you know, one of these other great products but not for them. That wasn't the way that they consume information. It wasn't in their context. It wasn't, you know, didn't speak the language that they spoke. And so we really focused on that experience. And that became this journey we've been on because what that said was, okay, we started, sort of un started unraveling that. And it, you know, the first thing it said is, well, we need to have mobiles, right? So mobile got developed. And then it said, then then basically told us we need a data so we were trying to figure out like oh my gosh that person in that role needs data from everything and it's never in the warehouse it's it's only partially in the warehouse so that became our connector strategy you know as soon as we had connectors you know we had uh, this, the group of customers that we had said yeah this is great but with all these connectors connecting all this data from all these different places not in my warehouse you better provide some sort of etl you better provide some sort of data preparation layer so I can make sense of this. And that's when we kind of began that magic ETL journey and data flow journey. Um, you know, and in each step of the way, our platform has expanded based on the needs to fulfill that pipe, you know, from if the end destination is an executive user, what must be in place to get there? And so we definitely took the approach of we actually need this really broad platform, apparently, <laughs> that, that does all these different things that are, you know, you will find an expert, a, an individual product in each of those areas that's really great at that one thing. But what we chose to do was to build a product that brought it all together into one single experience so that yeah. cradle to grave, you could actually acquire, prepare, and present that data to that executive. Um, and that has, um, that has resulted a lot of roadmap. And I think I'm most proud of, of kind of some of the stuff that we've done most recently. So we were able to sort of like build the bridge across the raging river, so to speak, at first. And what we've been able to do over the last few years is actually take some of those core components and go back to them like Magic 2.0 and just really, you know, amp them up. And, you know, now that we understand their role in our platform and, and what they need to do, it's been easier to kind of make a distinction between do we go be the best standalone ETL tool in the world or do we continue to do the thing where we become the best ETL tool for the Domo stack, right? And that's, we've been able to kind of like um, really see what the difference and the nuance of those two things would be 
um, you know, and and really focus on those things. And I and I love that people are saying that Magic Two is one of the most um, you know favorited features because it does represent that commitment we have to keep sort of deepening some of the core areas of this platform that we have. You know, I explained it to Jay the other day. Like sometimes I feel like we started a mile wide and an inch thick, mm -hmm. right? Because we had to make that whole journey across data, you know, from data acquisition all the way to the delivery. Um, and now we're having the kind of the fun and not fun part sometimes of kind of surgically going in and really beefing up some of those areas. Adam, do you feel like the product is still, I, I think not to quote you poorly, but I think you said the, the, the target user is the kind of that executive persona. Do you still see that as the target user for the Domo platform, or are you trying to expand the range of people who are being, the, the range of personas supported by the platform? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, and it, it is, we still target that executive user. At the end of the day, that is who we want to feel empowered um, to make decisions. But what really you guys probably have noticed is we, that, that has meant depth though in features that that executive cares nothing about, right? That magic 2.0 is not something any exec ever cares about, but it's because of this relationship where the, you know, the technical experts and the analysts in our, in our group, um, you know, and, and, and on the call today, those are the people that are being asked to create these rich presentations and these rich app experiences and these rich data gardens, if you will, for those self-service execs to be able to use. Mm -hmm. And that's what's driving a lot of the roadmap right now. I feel like if I were to guess, uh, just haphazard a guess, I'd say 10% of the investment we make right now is in experience for the exec and 90% is in making sure that people who have to bring it together for the exec have the tooling they need. I like that. Um, and I guess the, the question that I'm struggling with or the thing that I see come up in the dojo community a lot is this question of, you know, one of the really cool things about Domos every year, the product is not reinventing itself, but look at Magic 2.0. It functionally, well, it functionally was reinvented to the point where it doesn't make sense to use Magic 1.0. A lot of times it doesn't make sense to use MySQL and Redshift. And I think one of the challenges we have in the community is like the documentation doesn't exist to, well, the documentation doesn't exist. So <laughs> um, I guess when, when you, when the dojo was relaunched, Carolyn posted this awesome video where you were talking about your commitment to the technical community to, to support it. Yeah. What does that look like for you? And like in your dream of dreams, right? Your target audience is the executive, but how do you see the rest of the world playing with your product? Yeah, no, that's a, that's the million dollar question to me, like our multi-million dollar question, um, <laughs> to Josh's tweet. Um, so the, uh, yeah, no, that for me, we hit a point, gosh, maybe five years ago where it was so clear that we would not survive without an, a thriving ecosystem. Um, and that came about because what we saw was the, the product platform um, just like you ran into where someone said, oh, you need to use the CLI. Oh, you need to use the API. The product actually is infinitely more powerful than most people realize um, because most people only know it through the UI. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it became clear that as more and more solutions were getting built on Domo. So there's a, you know, there's this whole host of solutions out there that are being powered by Domo that are, you know, standalone software even. And the more and more we saw that, the more and more we realized that the ecosystem was going to be what drove that, you know, the community of people that actually know how to wield this, this, this tool set in a way that, that is really effective. And um, that became kind of like the battle cry inside of the organization. Um, and we've always kind of struggled with our aggressive nature of like, how much do we want to build and how much do, you know, how far do we want to get down the road in the product we're building? you know, and how many resources do we have to devote to different things? And the reality has been, is we've been pretty pretty light on ability to devote resources toward things like documentation and toward things like, you know, sample code and SDKs that come preloaded with projects and 
you know, all those sorts of things. Um, are they on giant lists, you know, posted on whiteboards? <laughs> HQ? Absolutely, they're sitting there. Um, and, you know, I think when, when we were relaunching Dojo, the one thing that became really clear to me is it was a good opportunity um, because I saw that it was time to make a prioritization change from resourcing perspective to make sure that we are getting more in touch with the ecosystem that we want to build, that we, re that we require. Like we're not gonna survive without a thriving ecosystem. The platform's too powerful. It will, you know, it will never achieve what it needs to achieve um, if there isn't a vibrant group of people out there who know how to do really amazing things with it and that we've enabled at least the right basic information. Then folks like you and other groups that can come along will come along and, and you know, bring the real sort of like you know, variety and culture to that thing. Um, but we've got to make sure it is, it is driven with, you know, a core set of understanding and information. So Specifically in product management at Domo, I have a strategy for this year that lines up with the Dojo relaunch, and that is to actually get in touch with the ecosystem through product management. So, you know, many of you guys, you know, some, some, some on the call are past Domo employees, some are past Domo customers, some are current customers, and some are folks that I haven't met yet, um, and but still might be some of those even. Um, I think if I asked you, you know, how easy it was to get in touch with a product organization and have, you know, your thoughts, you know, sounded, you know, being able to use us as a sounding board, you'd probably say it's pretty tough. Um, and you probably, you know, some of you might say, well, I know a product manager, I've got their email, I send that, I send something to them. Um, but what I really see Dojo as is a place where we can start to kind of do something that will help my team, which is scale. Um, you know, there's so much signal, there's so much, you know, need for information. Um, and the one thing I want to make sure we do is kind of bubble up the biggest topics. And I feel like Dojo is a great place where we can kind of, you know, throw the fish and pull out there, so to speak, and kind of like catch the biggest fish for now. And I hate to say that, you know, if you have a small fish, you know, on your plate, um, as, as discouraging, but you know, one of the things that I really want to do is get into this in a way that we can manage and we can scale and that my team doesn't, you know, suddenly come to me sort of all up in, in arms and say, we're, we're quitting because we're not building product. All we're doing is doing this other thing you wanted us to do, which is respond to the community. So I'm, I'm viewing the, like the idea exchange and some of the other stuff that we can do in Dojo as ways to get clarity and get importance behind certain topics that are the biggest things that are thwarting, you know, the community, so to speak. Um, it probably won't address nits, right? It probably won't be able to like, you know, prioritize things that are like, ah, I wish it did this. You know, I saw the one comment in Slack, um, in the Slack channel, like, why are Domo dates so annoying? And I was like, well, <laughs> um, that could be for a number of reasons, but you know, it makes I'm, me sad that that's the first thing you saw. <laughs> yeah, no, um, but it's great. I actually really love that. And and what would be amazing is if you know the relaunch of the dojo or the Slack channel or whatever it is that we're spending you know a lot of connectivity in, um, if that's the thing that a hundred people say that's the biggest challenge we face right now, man, that is like the most important signal for us to get in our product organization. So I want to connect into that. I want to make sure we're accessible and I want to make sure we have a way to respond when things reach those levels. That's a manageable thing we can stay on top of. I, I hope you, I know you're super busy. I hope you have a chance to pop in um, either during John's session later on today, or just get some notes from him because um, Carolyn gave us a data set of all of the questions people have ever asked on the dojo. And John is running a little data science project to see what are the common themes, what's oh, coming cool. up most frequently. As I, I mean, Grant apparently is beating me by 200 points right now in the dojo, but we can tell you with confidence that the most requested things that are coming up are how do we deal with dates? How do we deal with the window functions? Why aren't they turned on by default? Like from where I'm sitting, there's some real, there's some real disconnect between what I would call core functionality and appeasing a group of the Domo community that's like the million dollar ARR, like this multi-fabric, very cool feature, um, but most of the Domo community probably won't benefit. And so I guess we, you know, the group here may or may not represent large fishes, 
Um, but how do we get that onto your radar? Or do you see that as something that you can? Oh, so don't, don't take my large fish comment as a customer size comment, because I will tell you a couple of things. Some of the smallest customers I have are the ones that are benefiting from our, our multi-cloud Snowflake integration so far. Oh. I think I just capped off the question you asked, which is, hey, you know, um, explain that big fish, little fish. Um, and so I, I hope, hopefully that sets it, sets it up for everybody the way I want it to be understood. What other, uh, where did you want to go next, Jay? Well, we're actually reaching the top of the hour. And um, I wanted to check in with our audience and see if anybody had any questions that they wanted to ask Adam. I see Alexis was um, wondering if there's going to be a charge for Magic 2.0. But let's make that a broader question. Is there a way to get more transparency around which features will be premium features, which pre announced features are going to not be premium features, and what will they cost? Yeah, so we are definitely changing our beta process. Um, our beta process has always included a um, an element that describes whether something going into beta is is meant to be a premium add-on or not. Um, I think you know sometimes we do run into cases where something that we start building becomes you know, a lot more cost impactful to mm -hmm. us on in the product side than we an, originally anticipated. And we sort of have to readjust along the way. Um, you know, I think um, the the specific question about Magic 2.0 is, is definitely we have to put some metering around it. We want it broadly out there, um, but it actually is, is actually quite performant in a way that can, um, do things to the you know kind of our core infrastructure that we never um, have seen before as far as like amount of load it generates, but that's at the highest levels of usage, right? So we're 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 certainly sort of like figuring out a way to make sure everybody gets access to it right now at some you know at some sort of core level, and for those people that um, go you know far above and beyond that kind of impact to the system. Um, you know, there will be, there will likely be some sort of additional charges for, for that group, but wicked, but yeah, it's, it's, it's such a, it's such an amazing feature. The last thing, like if you saw my product team, um, hanging their heads about the fact that, that it's not out, like me, I know Nihar's on the call, like yep. <laughs> cries himself to sleep every night that it's not, um, fully released to everybody yet, but that is the goal. Absolutely. We want it in everybody's hands. Wicked. All right. Um, Adam, Simon, thank you so much for joining. We're going to kick on over to the next session. The last thought I wanted to leave everyone with is Nihar will be talking about how to build more performant data pipelines, I want to say tomorrow, um, because recursive data flows are terrible. So if that sounds controversial, make sure to come to the session and, and we'll have that conversation.